Hey, it's Mark Pedrosi, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Breathe in the mailing, put out the marketing. Mike, how are you? I'm doing really, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Good to see you. Okay. We've got the dude buddy, Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I am excellent. Happy to be here. Excellent. Excellent. We've got Eric Peterson, who's on a mission. The technician. Eric, how are you? I'm good, Mark. Good to see you. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are things in Vegas? Hot, oh, man. We're hot. It's you know, I love waking up to that Echo Show 10 and seeing excessive heat warning. Right. I know what you mean. Like 117 here today. 117. And last but not least, you know him, you love him, the brain, the professor, your fight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are things? Uh, they're good, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I have no topic today. We're going to do the roundtable ramble and just see what comes of it. Kind of like a Seinfeld episode. Today's roundtable is about nothing. But yet, I'm sure there'll be some value that, you know, arises from a roundtable with no agenda. That being said, as I was speaking, I thought of a question. So we'll just start with Mike. Well, when you first started, or even today, what was the most surprising thing you found or discovered about the land business that you didn't even think was a thing? Oh, wow. Um, well, I, I guess what comes to mind is the biggest surprise is that I could actually do it. Um, firefighter for 20 plus years, um, no prior business experience. Um, you know, I, I'm just surprised at what I've accomplished and what I can, it's, it really blows my mind when I think about it. You know, the fact that, uh, um, you know, I have never run a business, never um, had any formal training in running a business, never was involved in any type of uh, anything other than just firefighting for the last 20 plus years. So the biggest surprise to me was, I mean, I believe the model, uh, I, I know a close friend of mine was doing the business, so I believed it worked, but he had been a real estate agent at some times. And he's just sort of one of those always kind of successful in certain things. I'm like, well, maybe that's what it, I, I, I didn't know that I could do it. So to me, that's the biggest surprise that I've the success I've had and what I've been able to accomplish. So uh, I think that points to the fact that really anybody can do this business. Honestly, if you follow the, the recipe, as we always talk about, and I guess I would close with that. You say the, the podcast about nothing, but in, you know, in, in some ways you think about nothing, it's the potential for everything. So this really, this business has the potential to really explode into anything uh, and you want, you can take it any direction and you can really grow it and you don't have to have, prior experience running a business or you don't have to know anything about real estate you don't have to really know much about anything i mean you'll be able to use a little bit of computer skills but so that's the biggest surprise that i could actually do it that was really profound what you said actually it's like a like a zen cone i felt very at peace after you said that what is zen shunyata i think they call it emptiness or shun, i don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it but it's emptiness it's potential it's not empty it's not empty. It's potential. It, it has infinite possibilities. Yeah. I like that. Um, dude, buddy, Scott Bossman, what was the most surprising thing to you? Or has well, been the most see. surprising thing? A few things. I guess uh, thinking of the mechanics of the business, six years ago when I was working as a PT, I never would have guessed that I could just buy and sell a piece of property on my computer in the middle of an afternoon, all within an hour. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to buy the property, sell the property. And with today's technology, be able to do that, not ever having seen the property with a couple hours of research or less. Uh, so the mechanics of it are kind of amazing to me. And the fact that this business scales to the point where, you know, to put things in perspective, I never dreamed I'd be able to work in my land business, probably a tenth of what I worked as a PT with a salary that is much more than what I made as a PT. Uh, so the fact that this is a business that can scale, uh, 
you know, it takes, Mark, you say this all the time, and I think it varies per person. It can be three to five years to where you want to get this right to where you want to get it. Some people go faster. There are some rock stars. But listen, my PT education was three years, right? So I educated my land, myself in land for three years, and look what happened. Uh, I have a business that has scaled, that has uh, allowed me to benefit uh, with time, uh, more time, location freedom, more financial security. So I guess uh, for me, uh, that was that's huge because I never really thought outside the box. I just come from a family that always trades their, you know, people trade their time for money. Uh, and there aren't really many entrepreneurs in my family. So uh, that, I guess, those, those couple of things were most surprising for me. Yeah, that, that's a lot to unpack there. But it's, it is, you know, um, to just put it succinctly, it is life-changing. And I, I think that on so many different levels of the, of the spoke of the wheel of your life, it's not just financial. It's right. not just physical. It's not just, it's spiritual as well. It's, it's everything because when you are not trading dollars for, you know, hours for dollars, you have that time to move, move up Maslow's hierarchy needs into self-actualization and, and do things in life that you may never have had time to do and, and you know, explore those things and, and, and deepen those relationships. It's, it's, it's mind-boggling. So that's, yeah. And I'm sure when you first started, your, your family was like, no, that's not what we do. Oh, yeah, they all looked at me like it was nuts. Yeah, yeah, that's risky. It's risky. Um, the technician, Eric Peterson, what was most surprising to you? Um, you know, I really... I, I really identify with, with Mike's comment to start off. I think that, um, you know, myself included and probably many others in our community feel the same way. Um, if they've had any level of success in this business, um, you know, not everybody comes in feeling like this is the perfect fit for them and being able to accomplish it is, um, you know, rewarding and, it, it feels great, but I think more recently and, and from a different perspective, um, what has surprised me is just, I mean, we talk about it all the time, but how inefficient the land market truly is. And I think, um, at least in our business, we're seeing that now more than ever um, from the standpoint of, I mean... I don't want to say we can go out and ask anything for the properties that we have for sale, but it almost feels that way that we are, we're just completely defining the market on the amount that we want to get for a particular property. And we're able to get it um, because of the demand in the marketplace right now. So um, that's, that's just, I guess, a, a surprise for me at, at this point in, in the business. Yeah, I, I love that. It's so true. And um, I remember when I first started, I remember saying to a buddy, at the end of the day, you know, I'm coming from an investment banking background because the margins were, to me, unsustainable. And I'm like, oh, at the end of the day, this is a 30% gross margin business. That's what I, I thought. That was 20 years ago. The, the margins have only increased since then. And you would think, well, there's more people doing this. There's more quote unquote competition. Not really, not really it just feels that way that what, if there's competition, then the margins would decrease, not stay the same or increase. That doesn't make any economic sense. So it just goes to show how big the market is and how few people are really doing it. Um, Tate, I love it when you call me Big Papa Litchfield. What was surprising to you? Um, one of the things that I found kind of surprising was that some people out there on rare occasions are willing to give you their land for free. Like that, that was pretty wild the first time I had somebody give me property for, you know, 
a dollar or I had to take over the back taxes or something like that. I was blew my mind. I thought, wow, can you imagine owning something and wanting to get rid of it so bad that you'll give it away? Like this isn't, this isn't like a, a broken down computer screen. This isn't an old treadmill that doesn't work. This is an asset. And it goes to Eric's point, right? It's such an inefficient marketplace that they knew it had value, obviously, but they just didn't know how to use it and how to, how to get rid of it or how to make it cash flow for them. So that was a, uh, a, a shocker. The other thing that really surprised me, and I'm thinking like early, early on, was that not only did people want this, but if you bought in the right area, there was a line of people that wanted it. That was shocking. You're buying land sometimes in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I remember at a boot camp, somebody said, don't buy land, you need a helicopter to access. And I thought, well, the price is right, I'm buying it. Like, you know, like th there were people lined up to get that stuff from me. And I thought, I'm set, I'm hooked. Like, I think back to my first time I had a terms deal go through and I knew my life was changed. I could never go back. So that was, uh, that was a big, you know, aha moment. And to realize that there is a very big demand for this land. And at the end of the day, it's not like any given land investor has 2000 lots in inventory. Right? We have a handful and we're always buying more, but there is a bigger demand sometimes than what's available. So it's, it's a cool, it's a cool market to be in. I don't know. I, I've always been shocked by that, that more than one people want what I have available, regardless of how desolate and remote it might be. Yeah. I mean, I, I learned that the hard way, but there is a pig for every barn. Um, it's, it's yeah. Everything you're saying resonates with me and uh, Scott Todd. Last but not least, what do you find or what have you found the most surprising in the land business, your land business? Yeah, all, all of the above. And um, I think that the most surprising piece for me is, and this is going to sound, it's going to sound strange, but how easy it is. Okay. And it's, and what I mean by that is the land business in general is very easy. The the difficult part is right here in your brain, the, the, this area, okay? So the ease of this business, it's, it's simple. The complexity comes because we try to make it more complex than what it really is. It really is. I was talking to this guy the other day who was telling me that uh, he's, he's telling me that he's a, a building developer. And he was telling me, uh, I'm like, oh man, that sounds crazy. Like, you know, that sounds, a real estate developer. I'm like, that sounds crazy. He's like, no, nah, it's very simple. He goes, I only work in about a 10 block area in my town. I work in this 10 block area. I drive around, I think about what's missing and then I go and I fill the need. And I said, that's it. And he's like, that's it. Okay. So he goes, it's simple to be a real estate developer. Well, I think it's simple to be a land investor. The hard part is getting out of your way and fighting to keep it simple because I mean, Everybody wants to tell you something. Oh, use this, use that, do this, do that, dude. Look, it, it does not need to be that complex. Keep it simple and you will benefit from the simplicity more than someone who's trying to make it complex. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And um, when we talk about the, the business, I do like to say, you know, it, it's not easy. It's simple. But in a way, it, it is easy. It's just that it's really bad to say publicly because for some people, it's not easy. It might just be more accurate to say it's easy for us for whatever reason. But I would say that eventually, because we've seen this with enough of our flight school and coaching clients, once they get out of their own way, and just follow the recipe, it becomes so easy and it's amazing to watch them scale. So I can't go on another person's podcast and be like, this is the easiest business model ever because it's, it's, it's not, it's just the, the simplest one. But um, 
Scott Todd, does that make sense? It does make sense, yeah. Yeah. So I, if you're listening to this and you're struggling, it's not easy. Nothing worth doing is really easy. But that being said, it will get easier for sure. It just might be super easy for Scott Todd, which is surprising. I think the difference is, is that um, at the end of the day, what makes this simple is that you're buying something and selling it. That's, that's all you're doing. I mean, in the easiest sense, you're buying something for one price and selling it for another price. Where the complexity comes in is you're also starting a business in the, in the other, other component of it. So, you know, you, you have to just separate, like, what is it that you're fighting to keep? And it's the simplicity. You got to You got to fight to keep it simple, your business simple. And I've had so many people tell me, Oh, I, I man, looking back, I tried to make this thing hard and, and harder than what it really was. Just follow the recipe mail until you can buy something, buy it, and then market the heck out of it until you sell it and rinse and repeat and keep it going. But I think that where people get into trouble is that they try to scale too fast. Okay, they they want that passive income to replace their their uh, their own wages almost immediately, and in fact, if they take that long term approach, like Scott Bossman said, you know, he he went to school for three years to learn how to do his other job. If you just go to school in this for three years, you'll be amazed at what you can create, and it may not take you three years. No, it, it's so true. Um, I'd say for me, the the most surprising thing there's been. Like everything you guys have said has been a, a surprise to me, actually. Um, and I, I relate to all of it. Um, although I would say like, you know, for Mike, my, my background, I had no real estate background, but I would say that I was probably delusionally overconfident for whatever reason. I thought, oh, you know, there's no way I, I can't, this won't work for me. Like I just, I just never had that doubt because I just, I had success like pretty quick at that first auction. So I never had doubt really creep in. Um, even after the, the Great Recession, um, I still knew this is a solid model and I, and I love doing it. Mark just needs to figure out his own stuff <laughs> and like lower his personal overhead uh, when, because we're in a, a market cycle. But I think what's surprising to me today is number one, the joy that the business still brings me um, to be doing something for 21 years now. And yet I still look forward to it every day. Um, there's still something new to learn. Business is endless. Learning is endless. The growth opportunities are endless. Yeah, I mean, the technical pieces may stay the same as far as, you know, the way that we're buying and selling, but even that can change. But like, you know, how many times can I talk about you know, different deeds, right? That may not change so much. Some of the technical things or, um, you know, how to record a deed. But um, there's so many different ways to um, work this business, enjoy this business, grow the business, scale the business. And for me, it's kind of a surprise. I don't think I ever thought that it would just be endlessly interesting to me, if that makes sense. So, you know, this is not, not such a ramble. Tate, what's what's on your mind? What's what else can we ramble about? Oh, I was just thinking, like you know, that kind of ties into fun. Like you enjoy what you do, and that's half the battle in life, right? Is enjoy it. It's it is a challenge in a way, and this business can be as difficult or as demanding as you want it to be, and that is the challenge, right? Is to find that happy medium. You want to take the Scott Todd approach and work never go ahead, or you can take the approach that a lot of us like to take which is i like it i like doing certain things and i'm not giving it up i can i know how but i'm not because it's me and i like it and that's a cool position to be in so yeah it's it's a fun line of work i wake up in the morning when i do work and i say well, let's do this like this is something i enjoy you know i i don't i don't view it as a chore and I'm blessed i think at the end of the day we're just blessed by the land business I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Well, we're at that point in the podcast where we're going to ask someone for a tip of the week. 
a website, a resource, a book, something that was actionable for the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives, say whatever you want to say. However, before we go to that, I want to just give a shout out to our sponsor this week, which of course is Flight School. Learn how going through a 16 week program with Scott Todd as your Sherpa can literally start changing your life, build that passive income quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd, who's done it thousands of times. And that tuition for flight school, yeah, it ain't gonna cost you nothing. We guarantee you're gonna make that money back in 180 days or less. Just show us your work. So no worries. And um, it looks like we had two people that want to do. I disagree with that. Tip of the week. It looked like a tie. Square. Square. No I way. saw it. I saw him. You guys lost. Boston was last. You guys oh, lost. Last. You guys oh, lost. Finish, Aaron Square. We did the nose goes and you guys lost. I mean, you no can't. This is, this is not a new rule. This is something that's been around since the, you know, well, Scott Todd did this. Like, what's this? I don't like think you're no evil, speak no evil, like see no evil, but it clearly was not a nose goes. So you guys both lost. I mean, it's, it's not my rules, but I do have to enforce them. All right. I think the only fair way to really solve this, we're on Zoom. I'm going to count it down. Let's just see who starts. One, two, three, throw. Because rock, paper, scissors solves it. What? <laughs> no, we're doing the wrong. What are we doing? Okay, so it's one, two, three, throw. Are we all throwing? No, 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 just the, no, just the two Scots. Okay, oh. one, two, three, throw. Oh, okay, they tied. They tied. Paper, paper. Go again. Was one, paper, three, two, three, throw. <laughs> paper, paper. This is incredible. Did you see Scott Todd? He kind of delayed that a little bit. He's no yeah, way. Yeah, he's oh, the judges. All right, Scott Todd, what is your tip of the week? A right. website, a resource, a book, something that's actionable. All right. You're working hard. You're working hard every day, working hard for the money. So do this. Do yourself right. Every morning, go eat yourself a donut and enjoy life, and I'm out. What? A, a donut Wait, tip of the, the week? Tip? To eat a donut every morning? Yeah. It's been spoken. All right. I'm, I'm going to have a tip of the week. <laughs> I don't love that tip of the week. I'm going to have a business tip of the week. I want everyone this week to review their guarantee. If your guarantee does not make you a little nervous, it's, not, it's, a, it's a meek, weak guarantee. You can steal my guarantee. Okay. My, my land clients, when they buy a piece of property, we guarantee they're going to love that property. And if for whatever reason they don't love it, then we're going to either exchange it for property they do love or refund them. That's up to 90 days. We have a 365-day exchange guarantee. So if they can't even get out there in 90 days, I'll exchange it in 365 days. So it's very simple happy customers guaranteed so if your refund is like 30 days not good enough if it's 45 days it's probably not good enough make it irresistible take away all the risk and i mean honestly i, I can't I have very very few people take us up on that refund i would say less than 0.01 percent it's really rare mike Zane was the last time you had a give a refund um i have nothing in short-term memory so it's been a while that there you go scott bossman refund uh it's been a number of months actually yeah there you go three four months three four months ago i i gave back a, a down payment and one monthly payment but i kept the document all right eric how about you i had one last month but that was the first one in probably about six months all right tate uh i don't know i don't know not scott, not, recently. not 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 in recent memory scott todd 
Uh, I can't think of the last time we we used it. In fact, uh, what we tend to use it more is from a, a customer that's annoying. Uh, we kind of leverage that piece and we'll say, look, you know, you don't seem very happy. We'll plant the seed. You know, why don't we, why don't we just refund you? And then, you know, you can go find something that you really want. And so we use it as a way of firing the customer, but make it think it's their idea. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if you guys are getting value from the podcast, imagine how much value you would get to be in the room with all of us. With Scott Todd, Tate Litchfield, Mike Zano, Eric Peterson, Scott Bossman, Taria Harris. Because we're all going to be in Sin City, baby. Vegas in August. Go to landgeek.com forward slash boot camp and be in the room where it happens. Two and a half days of land investing immersion, I promise, on Sunday. You're going to walk out of that room pumped, everything clear. We won't end boot camp until all those questions are answered. And so much happens in the hallways just the networking alone it's worth coming to go to landgeek.com forward slash boot camp we are uh we only have limited spots so take your spot now before uh you get shut out because you know that's people have been stuck in their home for what over a year now everyone wants to get out it's going to be crazy so book now and uh and don't miss out well um I thought this was great. Also, um, I want to thank the listeners, remind them the only way that, you know, I'm going to continue to be able to make bad jokes is if you do us three little favors. You got to uh, follow, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review, support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course. Um, are we ready to do this? One, two, Three, let, let freedom, freedom ring. Not bad, not bad. Tate was like, eh. it's, it's, it's a different energy without Tree, isn't it? I miss her. I miss her. Tree and Landon, if you're listening, we miss you guys. And Landon, get well. All right. Tate's giving me that look like low blood sugar. Yep, it's time. Thanks, time. Everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Read and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.